housing in Africa, could this be an opportunity within a crisis? The housing situation in Africa is a subject of contention in many conversations. Tonight, we are going to shed some light on it as well as see what is happening in the African housing market. This is the Private Property Podcast. I'm Dumi. Welcome. Congratulations once again to Polina Nkosi for walking away with that 500 grand cash prize from Friday's show. I'm sure Polina's weekend was absolutely amazing, spending that money. And if you want to be like her, join the conversation on Facebook by sharing this post and tagging your friends. And the person with the most shares wins 500 rand. Remember, in tonight's episode, you need to share. Share this conversation with anybody you think needs to hear the information we are talking about tonight. In honor of Africa Month, let's take at some look. Let's take a look rather at some of the history of our beautiful continent. Number one, Africa is the second largest and second most populous continent after Asia on the planet. It is an almost entirely isolated landmass with only a small strip of land connecting it to Western A to Western Asia, which is popularly known as the Middle East. Number two, the history of Africa begins with the emergence of hominids, early humans, and homo sapiens in East Africa. Number three, according to experts uh, who researched the history of the African continent, the original name for Africa is Alke Bulan. This name translates to Mother of Mankind or the, the Garden of Eden. Number four, the archaeological finds in Central Africa have been discovered dating back to over 100,000 years. Extensive wall sites as well as settlements have recently been found dating to the first millennium. We hope that you enjoyed learning about um, the beautiful history that Africa contains. Remember, if you don't know where you've come from, you might just not know where you are going. Tonight's guest boasts of 21 years of experience in the African housing market. He holds an MBA from the Durham University Business School in the United Kingdom. And if there's anybody to help us unpack this topic tonight, it's none other than Shelters Afrique's Group CEO, Mr. Andrew Bandeka Chimponda. Good evening, Mr. Chimponda, and thank you so much for joining us right here on the Private Property Podcast. Uh, to me, good evening to you uh, and obviously uh, your listeners. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we really, really uh, appreciate you taking our time, you know, um, talking about such an important subject. I mean, uh, all of us are living in Africa currently, and we are, it's, it's beautiful that we learn about it. So let's just delve straight into the conversation and talk about um, our housing market. The African housing market is unique. And could you just take us through some of those um, reasons or headlines, why it's so unique as compared to others in the world? All right, Tumi, thank you very much. And uh, uh, for me, I've had the privilege to, to operate um, at Shelter Freak, where I've actually visited um, at least about 45 uh, countries in Africa. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so I have an understanding a bit in terms of uh, the lay of the land in Africa. I'm currently now focusing on my PhD uh, thesis on Africa as well and innovative products uh, to enhance housing. Africa is unique because, like you mentioned in the fact finding, um, Africa has got a lot of uh, potential in terms of population growth. It has one of the highest population growth rates. So you find that the current population of Africa might be about 1.4 billion people. When we get to 2050, that's estimated to be at about 2.5 billion. So you see a lot of opportunity. At the same time, when we come back to housing, there's a high rate of urbanization. What we mean to me is the movement of people from rural areas to, um, to urban areas. It's very high across Africa. So you find that uh, from as far as um, Uganda, 5% urbanization rate, uh, the average in Africa is about 4%. You're beginning to see that there's a lot of pressure in the urban areas. I'm talking about the cities now, because the rate at which people are moving to the towns 
cannot keep up with the rate at which houses are being built to accommodate these people. Hence, you start having a proliferation of slums. So what is unique about Africa is the, the, the migration of people to the town areas. What is unique about Africa is that there's a, a huge shortage of housing uh, in Africa, which we estimate at about 56 million housing units. That is the shortage in Africa. Now to put it in perspective, it's about 22 million in, um, in Nigeria. It's about uh, 4 million in, uh, in, 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 um, in DRC, Congo, South Sudan, 4 million. Tanzania, about 3 million shortage. Coming close to Ghana, about uh, 2 million shortage and the like. So, so that is the problem. That huge shortage of housing units also it presents itself an opportunity. And the high rate of the urbanization rate coming in from the rural areas to the urban areas or centers obviously creates a huge demand for housing. Otherwise, you, of course, you're going to have a proliferation of slums or informal settlements because you won't be able to cater for the huge demand for housing that is created uh, uh, in the cities within Africa. Thank you so much for that. And um, coming into um, this market and the African one specifically, um, what are currently our trends? What are the current trends that are happening and the headlines that are currently in, in the housing market um, as, as unique as you've, you've mentioned it to be? Okay, I think um, what you could say, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the trends is that uh, you are now seeing the realization of governments in terms of putting their focus on housing. Most governments in Africa have a housing ministry and beyond that they have a delivery vehicle to either try to develop housing units. You have also in Africa a realization of the need to work together to deal with this housing problem. I think just in uh, May, a couple of weeks ago in May, there was an Afri Cities uh, Summit that was held in a town called Kisumu in, um, in Kenya. You'll find in, Af in, in South Africa, you have a center for affordable housing foundation called CAF, founded by a lady called uh, Kersha Rust, that tries to get all the data to do with housing uh, throughout, of Africa, throughout Africa. And then of course you have um, institutions that are being developed. So if you look at it from a simplistic point of view, if you look at the supply side of, of, of housing, there's now a need and a shift towards developing or at least developing uh, contractors or developers that can build at scale. You're now seeing that uh, there's a strong realization that the biggest problem in Africa is affordability. Because in the past, developers would build without a clear understanding, of course, of what the market can afford. Because the biggest problem in Africa is really affordability. So you need to build a housing units that are affordable. You need to provide financing for those beneficiaries that's also affordable in terms of longer tenures and then hopefully lower interest rates. And then of course you need to, I mean, post the pandemic of COVID, you started to see a more self-reliance of different countries in Africa to be able to, to, to actually have their own raw materials because there was a huge dependency on importing, as you know, from the likes of China because of lower prices. But with the pandemic and borders closing, you know, countries are beginning to realize they need to be a bit more, you know, self-sufficient. So what we are saying is post COVID-19, most countries are beginning to realize that housing construction is a very big, um, like I can call it panacea, or it's a big um, opportunity for them to actually not only you know, improve the growth of the economies in terms of the contribution of housing to the gross domestic uh, product, which is a measurement of economic growth, but also in order for them to satisfy a large number of the populace, most governments are realizing if they can del deliver in terms of mass housing across the scale, they are able to basically satisfy a big need that is needed across all countries within Africa. Of course, each country, of course, is different in terms of uh, level of, um, you know, of, 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 of development. But what I can definitely say is that there is a huge shortage of housing across all, you know, all the countries within Africa and Africans themselves are now coming together to say, 
how do we share learnings in terms of improving the delivery of housing in Africa. In the month of July alone, around the 26th of uh, July, there's a big show called the Abuja International Housing Show, which has about more than 500 exhibitors and more than 15,000 participants to come together to share knowledge and skills to see how can we kickstart the supply side. Mm -hmm. Another trend is trying to embrace alternative building technologies. Of course, you've heard about 3D printing in terms of housing. You know, you've heard about a lot of other uh, methods to try to reduce the shortages of housing. But what we are seeing now is that Africa is the only continent where you have a lot of urbanization without a concomitant um, industrialization. Mm. So there's a growth, gradual shift towards how do we industrialize the delivery of housing? How do we get to that point where we are not focusing on the traditional brick and mortar you know, technology to, to build housing, but we're now focusing on building factories so that housing construction is just assembly, reducing housing construction from maybe three months or so, a house to maybe two or three weeks or so, et cetera. So those are the trends. They're going to take time to be embedded within the different countries in Africa. But as I say, Africa, not all countries are at the same level of, of development. Not all countries have the same level of infrastructure development. Not all countries have the same level of, in terms of development of their, you know, financial systems, et cetera, you know, and, and, and that's what we're looking at. So what I can say to me is that, uh, you know, when you look at uh, mortgage penetration across the African continent, isn't it um, interesting to notice that uh, if you look at Nigeria, mortgage penetration usually is a measurement of how mortgages are supporting countries. Now, if you look at Nigeria, the penetration is only 0.5%, yet it's got a shortage of about 22 million. So the Africa has probably got the, one of the highest penetrations in Africa of about 12%, uh, but across the board, it's very low compared to developed economies like America, Australia, where the penetrations uh, between 60 to 80 percent uh, respectively. So in short, yes, there is a growing trend that we should focus not only on building houses, but making sure that uh, the way we build them is in a, in a manner which embraces alternative building technologies. It's in a manner whereby we try to industrialize housing so that we can benefit from low-cost housing through the delivery of large-scale houses. And then lastly, to come up with an affordable housing unit, there is a growing trend towards trying to create sustainable public-private partnerships so that the end product is going to be affordable to the would-be beneficiaries of housing to me. Thank you so much for that. And, you know, as we start rounding up our conversation tonight, I just I just want us to talk because you have international experience in terms of studying and probably even, you know, the different work that you do. You, you are mentioning a lot of different countries now, and which is great because um, Africa is, is big and its potential is, is massive. So if we know um, the, how the different markets look in the other different countries, there's so much learning that could happen if we have these different, you know, um, engagements between the countries. So... Looking at it internationally, what would you say um, attracts international investors? And we, we, we're specifically talking investments, you know, people who, who are from abroad, who look at Africa as more than just a tourist site, as more than just a place, you know, to come and experience the beautiful heritage that we have. Um, looking at it as an investment opportunity, what makes Africa so attractive to the international investors? Okay, well, thank you to me um, for that opportunity. I have to say that um, I think one of the key things about Africa being an emerging market, it's the potential returns. And I think investors outside, for as long as um, a project, there's a clear understanding of what those risks are, particularly development risk um, and how those risks can be mitigated, uh, they'll want to enter the African market. Why so? Because of the fact that um, the returns are high. I mean. In, in most projects, even if you look, I'm talking residentially, or even if you look at the commercial uh, areas, you have cap rates of 9% projects that can deliver uh, IRRs, inter internal rate of returns of at least uh, 25%. Those returns you're never going to see outside. And now with the advent of COVID, there's a lot of opportunity that investors are seeing because you know properties are more or less, I would say undervalued uh, because 
of the fact that there's, you know, the supply of financing has been restrained, particularly for people wanting to buy houses, which reduces the demand, even though it's growing slightly. So because of that, you know, supply and demand looks at then prices going down, not only for residential, but also for, you know, retail property. And, you know, entrepreneurial uh, pers prospective investors are looking at Africa as it stands as an uh, you know, opportunity to come in and just snap up all these properties so that by the time, you know, those economies start to pick up and grow, they'll have taken advantage, um, you know, of, of, of that opportunity. I mean, a lot of uh, the, the statistics you find in Africa is if you look at the 2020 combined uh, GDP was about, I think, 2.6 trillion, consumer spending in Africa of about 1.4 trillion, and by, you know, the actual working age population by even 20, 30 or so in Africa is, you know, kind of estimated about 1.1 billion. So, so in essence, you know, as an investor, you've got the investors that, uh, that, that uh, let's say, for instance, big fund managers uh, of uh, big, you know, you know, pension funds in, 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 in overseas, particularly America, I was in a conference where they were discussing ticket sizes of their own doing investment of not less than like $30 million. So it's about how we package those uh, investment products. It's about how we understand what those prospective investors are looking at so that we can tailor make our proposition or, or our investor value proposition to meet those requirements. So no, make no mistake, there is funding out there uh, mm. to be able to come in and, and get that invested in property but it's a question of how we make Africa attractive in terms of in terms of that. Some we want to invest in big projects. Some we want to invest in big funds, like you have in South Africa, G, you know, PF. They want to invest in, in PIC, PIC, invest in big funds so that they can use the expertise of those African funds to help them kind of manage uh, the risk. But no, make make no mistake, Africa is the go-to place. For prospective investors at a, at a large scale and at an individual scale you have a lot of the diaspora population that has left africa to go to the uk or america you know to, to search for additional returns etc they always want to invest back into their country yeah. and the biggest investment you find they get they get uh, their money is tangled in with is, is specifically property because they want to have an underlying security for the money they put in and because from a management point of view once they put in someone to rent it's easier to manage than to invest in a business where you've got to be involved uh, on, on, on a full-time basis so i believe that uh, you know property is the safe uh, invest investment to make you've got the underlying security there's potential for capital growth over and above the return you make from the rent that the prospective investor will, will be making. Of course, rental yields yeah. may, be, may be low, but at the same time, you've got that security of the fact that uh, you've got uh, that asset which is earning income for you. No, thank you so much for that. Um, very insightful and very enlightening. You know, there's so much that is happening on the African continent that we can take advantage of. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, um, Mr. Chimpond. And hopefully the next time we see you, you'll have gotten that PhD and I'll be referring you to doctor. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank yeah, you. well, no, it's, uh, to me, it's such a pleasure. Uh, yeah, that's something which I'm working on right now on a full-time basis. And I pray that uh, I should deliver that very soon. But uh, I just want to thank you for inviting me to your platform uh, to have the ability to share some insights. I'm very passionate about property, except I, see, I think the time is a bit too, too short. I mean, to really talk about Africa, you really need the full week. Sure. But uh, I'm grateful yeah. to be able to shed uh, light in terms of my, my bit of experiences uh, in terms of operating in about 45, 46 countries on the African continent in yeah. the last three to four years. No, thank you so much. Really appreciate it and have a beautiful night forward. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Thanks to you and all your listeners. Have a thank good day. You. Have a good day. All right. Cheers, buddy. And thank you to you to staying for staying till the almost the end of our episode tonight. But before I let you go, of course, I need to announce the winner of the 500 grand cash prize today. 
and this is the person who's been engaging and sharing their link with their friends and family and if you do the same you could stand in line to win 500 rand cash so tonight's winner goes to drum roll please <laughs> Thank you so much to Glenn, Glenn Majorzi. Thank you so much, Glenn, for engaging with us, sharing and ensuring that you stay on the timeline. Thank you. You have been absolutely amazing. If you want to be like him, join us every weekday here, 7 p.m. on the Private, Private Property Podcast. We absolutely enjoy spending the evening with you. Until next time we see you, have a good one.